both sides, minus 10 here, minus 10 here. Okay, and then what is 1 minus 10? Negative 1. X squared minus 9 equals 0. And then the reason you would do difference of perfect squares, perfect squares, is that both of these are perfect squares. What is the square root of x squared, Kate? Okay. X. Ready? Okay, x. What's the square root of 9? 3. Plus or minus 3, right? So we would do a plus 3 and a minus 3. Okay, then from there you would identify your solutions. Remember, they're always the opposite of what's in the parentheses. So it would be x equals the plus 3 turns to a negative 3. The negative 3 turns to a plus 3. Okay? Now, when you solve a quadratic in the graph, you are finding the x-intercepts. So if I wanted to sketch a picture of this graph, what that means is that it crosses at minus 3 and at positive 3. Okay, so that would be my graph. Okay, so the answers that you're finding are those two places that it crosses the x-axis. Okay? All right, we're going to do two more by difference of squares, and then we're going to learn our other method, okay? So this should be review. You should have seen this before. Okay, look at number one. We're square rooting both. What's the square root of x squared? What's the square root of 49? So it would be x plus 7 and x minus 7. Okay, so remember you square root both of them. Okay, and then you write your solutions. So if this is a plus 7, what's the opposite? Minus 7 and 7. Okay, let's do one more like that. Look at number 2. Can I, er, can I square root both of these right now? No, 2 doesn't have a perfect square. But remember, you should always check for a GCF first. Okay, so what can both of those divide by? 2. Take okay, care. Will you put your phone up, please? Okay, so I'm dividing by 2 on both. That gives me x squared. What's 128 divided by 2? 64. Then from there, I can do my dot shortcut, which is your square root on both. Square root of x squared is x. What's the square root of 64? Eight. Plus or minus 8. So I do x plus 8 and x minus 8. Then if that is equal to 0, remember your shortcut is you just switch up the signs. So if it's a plus 8 here, what's the answer? negative 8 and if it's a minus 8 here what's the answer positive 8 okay that would be considered solving by factoring okay the new method that you're gonna learn today okay first and second period both thought it was a little bit easier you're gonna get the x squared by itself and then to cancel out an x squared you take the square root so we're gonna do an example then we're gonna write the steps so let's say I'm doing this one. We want to get this by itself. Huh? We're going to go back and do it in a second. Okay, so how do I get rid of a minus 49 if I want this by itself? Add 49. What is 0 plus 49? 49. So these guys cross out. I have x squared equals 49. Okay, and then instead of factoring, I'm just going to keep solving. What's the opposite of a squared? A square root. And then what's the square root of x squared? Well, these guys cross each other out. Now it's just an x in the middle. What's the square root of 49? Plus or minus 7. Okay, do you see that these answers are the same? Okay, so it doesn't matter which way you solve it. At the end, your answer should come out the same. Okay? So let's do this one next. I have 2x squared. Minus 128 equals 0. We want to get this x squared by itself. How do I get rid of minus 128? Add 128. So I'm going to plus that on both sides. Negative 128 and plus 28 cross out. I have 2x squared equals 128. Now remember, we cannot square root until we get rid of that 2. So what would our next step be? Divide by 2. What is 128 if I divide by 2? 16. I mean, yep. 64. And then if that's an x squared, how do you undo a squared? You take the 
square root. What's the square root of 64? Plus or minus 8. And do you see how that's the same answer that we got when we solved it by factoring? Okay. So this is another way of doing the same thing. So let's go fill in your steps so that you can use them. Then we'll turn over to the back and do some more examples. Okay, the first thing that we always do is get the x squared by itself. So step number one, you're going to solve for x squared. That means that you want to get that by itself. Okay, so if there's like a minus, you would plus to get it away, plus, minus to get it away. Okay, then you are going to take the square root on both sides. Take the square root on both sides. And remember that the reason that we do that is that a square root and a squared will cancel each other out. So squared and square roots are considered inverses. What that means is that they cancel each other out. And then when you square root a number, make sure you get a plus and a minus on whatever that number is. Okay, then one other thing, you will only use square root method if x squared is your only x term. Okay, so if you have multiple terms with X in it, you would have to teach hard or you'd have to do GCF. We'll review those tomorrow. Okay? So when you're ready, go ahead and turn over to the back and we'll do a couple of examples. Okay, we are going to change a couple of these so that it looks uh, more like your homework. So make sure that you are not working too far ahead or you'll end up doing stuff you're not supposed to do. Okay, uh, first thing I want you to do is look at number three. So remember, we need the x squared alone. What do we do? Can't square root it until we get it by itself. Okay, so that's a good question. Uh, there, that's a good thing for you to bring up. You can divide by three, but I would wait. Always add and subtract first. So if it's a minus 12, how do I get rid of a minus 12? Add 12. What is zero plus 12? Okay, so 3x squared equals 12. What would I do next? Divide by 3? 12 divided by 3 is 4. Next step, what do I do? Square root, square root. Okay, 4 square rooted is what two numbers? Plus or minus 2. Make sense? Alright, next one. Look at number 4. What would I do first? Minus 8. Very good. What is negative 90 minus 8 more? Okay. So I have negative 98 on this side. I have negative 2x squared on this side. Make sure that you carry down that negative in front of the 2. Okay. What would I do next? Okay. Divide by negative 2. What is negative 98 divided by negative 2? 49. Okay, next step, what would I do? Square root. Square root of 49, what do we get? Plus or minus 7, very good. Okay, the next uh, one that we're going to do is number 6, but I want you to put a 16 in the front. So your problem is going to be, actually not 16, let's do, yeah, never mind, leave it. So it's 16x squared minus 1 equals 80. Okay, first step, what do we do? So we're changing number 6. What would I do first? Yes, what if you get a decimal? If you watch the examples, you'll see an example of each thing. So I would do minus 1 and plus 1 cross out. What is 80 plus 1? So 16x squared equals 81. What would I do next? Divide. Now, can 81 divide by 16 evenly? No. You will leave it as a fraction. This is why. Are you still square rooting? We are still going to square root it, but there's a special rule about square roots that when you square root a fraction, you're allowed to square root the top and the bottom separately. So if the top of this is an 81, what's the square root of 81? 9. 9. And if the bottom of that is 16, the square root is And can four. you break it down if they were like, if they even to each other? Yes. If they could divide, then you could do it, yes. Okay, so if it's a fraction, you can square root the top and the bottom separately and leave it as a fraction. I forgot the square root. 
to so get ten. Okay, that's a good question. We're going to work one like that, I think, here pretty soon. So, but basically, okay, let's just change this next one. Make it an 800 here, okay, to answer that question. Okay, so on number five, change that to a minus 800. What would I do first? Miss, I have a question. Okay, add, add 800. 800, yes. All right, so you know how it says, what if it's a plus 800 and you subtract 800? It'll be We're going to do an example like that next. So hang on just one second. It will be negative. So negative 800 and positive 800 cross out. So I have 4x squared equals 800. What would I do next? Divide by 4. What is 800 divided by 4? 200. Good. Okay, next step. What would I do? Square root. Now, if you type this square root of 200 into your calculator, okay, it's not a perfect square. Then look, guys, you would leave it like this, plus or minus square root 200. Okay? So if it does not come out perfectly, you're going to leave it in what's called radical form. Okay? That just means that you're going to leave it in the square root. Don't turn it into a decimal. Just leave it alone. Okay? All right, everybody pay attention. Number 10 works out a little bit differently. There's an example like it on your homework. Number 10, what would I do first? Okay, uh, solve. solve by subtracting what? Subtracting the 20. Okay, and Abraham, this is like the one that you asked me about. So I minus my 20. These guys cross out. So I have 5x squared equals, this is now a minus 20. What do I do next? Divide by 5. What's negative 20 divided by 5? negative 4. When you go to square root on both sides, are you allowed to square root a negative? No. Okay, and if you put it in your calculator, it would say error. Okay, so in that case, you would say no real solution. Okay, and the reason why is because you have a negative in a square root. And that should happen once on the front of your homework. Okay? Oh, yeah, number eight. Yep. Yes, we do one with a seven, eight. Yeah, so, okay, the next type of thing, guys, is that you could, what's different about seven, eight, and nine? What do you notice? They're all in parentheses. Okay, they all have parentheses. So the parentheses work out a little bit differently. We're only going to do three, so make sure that you're paying attention. Okay, number seven, what would I do first? I'm going to plus the 200 to solve. That's good. So 0 plus 200 is positive 200. Okay, what would I do next? Think about what we've been doing before. Okay, divided by 2. Okay, 200 divided by 2 is what? Okay, 100. Okay, at this point, it's a little bit different because you have that parentheses. So you get rid of all the numbers outside of the parentheses. When you get here, you cannot get rid of that minus 1 until you get rid of the squared first. How do you get rid of a squared? You take the square root. So I'm going to square root here and here. Remember that here, this square root and this squared cross out. What's left over from the middle? X minus 1. Okay, square root of 100 is 10, though. So look, watch. I want you to leave a little space here and then put plus or minus 10. Because the square root of 100 is 10. From here, you're saving a seat for this number to move over. If it's a minus 1, what will it be when I need to get rid of it? Plus 1 cross out, plus 1. Now, if this comes out to a whole number, you can find your two numbers. Why can't you just add the one? You are adding the one right there. You can put the plus one at the back, but usually... Why can't you just add it to the Because if it's a plus 10, it's going to... Because you get two numbers. So what's one plus 10? Okay, so one plus 10 is 11, and remember, you get a second number. What's 1 minus 10? Negative 9. Okay, so the reason why is that you have to keep that plus minus so that you get both of your answers. Okay? Let's do one more just like that. Look at number 8. 
What would I need to do first? Subtract the 4. That's exactly right. So minus 4 on both. What is negative 14? Minus 4 more. Negative 18. So these guys cross out. Okay, so we minus the 4 across. Next, uh, remember, you've got to get rid of anything not in the parentheses. So the negative four, 2 is the next target. How do I get rid of it? Negative divide. Okay, and remember, the reason we divide is because it's a coefficient. It's right in the front. Okay, these guys cross out. What is negative 18 divided by negative 2? What is negative 18 negative divided nine. by negative 2? Good. Oh, wait, positive 9. Positive 9. Okay, from here, what do I do? Your next step is to square root. And the reason why is because your 5 is in those parentheses. You cannot get to it right now. Okay, then from there, these guys cross out. X minus 5 equals. Remember, you're going to save a little spot here. What's the square root of 9? Plus minus 3. And then what are we going to put in this spot if this is a negative 5 to cancel it out? You would add 5 to cross it out and add 5 there. And so your answers will be 5 plus 3 and 5 minus 3. And you should be able to give me the two numbers that go with that. What is 5 plus 3? 8. 8. What is 5 minus 3? 2. two. Now, on your semester exam, uh, they could give it to you like this. And they could give it to you like this. Who's they? Uh, just the districts. They make your exam, not me. Oh, okay. so. Did they change it? No, they just can do either one, exam. and we don't get to see it. So. exam is normally you guys do it. Mm, Not for math. Oh, yeah. Okay, last one, number nine. You have a little star on it. This one happens. A lot of you, the ones on your homework can look can like... we work? Or we can't work on them? We will in just a second, but we're going to finish this first. So what would I do first on 9? Add 2. Add the 2. What's 10 plus 2? 12. Okay, so I have x plus 3 squared equals 12. What would I do next? Square root. Okay, can I square root 12? Yes, ma'am. Evenly? Oh, no. No, so then you leave it. You would just say x plus 3 equals still save your little spot just like last time but then you'd put plus or minus root 12 okay 12 cannot be perfectly reduced so you just leave it and then what am i going to put in that blank if that's a plus three <coughs> minus three okay and then these guys boom boom cross out okay so x equals negative three plus or minus root 12 and then that would be the end for that. They would not have you split that up if it doesn't come out to be a whole number. Okay? There is one on your homework on the back that we're going to do. It's the top left one, but I want you to change the 3 to a 9. Okay? So look on your homework at number 9. Change that 3 in the front to a 9. Okay? So right here, this is on your homework. We're changing this to a 9. Okay, what would I do first? Add 25. Good. So plus 25. Plus 25. These guys cross out. What's 0 plus 25? Good. So I have 9. X minus 1 squared. 25. From here, what do I do next? Minus 9. Not minus. Divide, because it's in front like that, right? Anytime it's right in front, you got to divide to get rid of it. Okay, now, can 25 divide by 9? No. No, but remember, Maybe fractions have that special property. Can you, can you okay, at the end, you're going to end up square rooting both of them. Uh-huh. So I have 25 over 9. And then when I go to do my square root step, remember that with fractions, it's okay. You have that property. So when I square root here, I'm going to square root both of these on top and on bottom separately. What's the square root of 25 on top? 5. Okay, x minus 1 equals plus or minus 5 on top. What on bottom? 3. And now notice, why am I leaving this little awkward space? If that's a minus 1, to get rid of it, I have to plus 1 and plus 1. And that would be your answer right there. So it is okay for you to have radicals that don't simplify and for you to have fractions that don't simplify all the way. 
Okay, there is also one on the back that comes out to be a no solution. Okay? All right, I'm going to bring you a new progress report just to kind of let you know where your grade is at. If you need to come to tutorials, you can come um, on Thursday after school or tomorrow. Yes. This. Five. Sure. Okay, so explain to me how you got to the six. You are right, though. Okay, so I'm going to add the 12 first, but it's not wrong what you said. So you'd add the 12 across. These guys cross out. 2x squared is 12. Then divide by 2. You have x squared is 6. When you go to square root, if it doesn't square root evenly, you just leave it in radical form. So you would put x equals plus or minus root 6. Yeah? Okay, let me check it. Hang on. 